Hi, on the previous lesson, I gave a basic instruction on how to create boxes using linear perspective. I want to reiterate some of the terms that I used for better understanding on the next phase. The first term I used is horizon line. A horizon line is that horizontal line where the sky and the ground meet in a perspective drawing. We also use the term vanishing point a lot. A vanishing point is where all of your diagonal or, in this case, orthogonal lines converge. Orthogonal lines are lines that give a sense of depth to our basic geometric shapes, in this example, the squares. You would connect the corners of the squares back to your vanishing point using orthogonal lines. The next lesson is the one-point linear perspective room. Usually, I would start a perspective drawing by drawing in a horizon line and establishing a vanishing point, but we're going to do things a little bit differently this time. I'm going to connect the corners of the square using my ruler, making sure I'm precise when I make my lines to make this X shape on the drawing area. The middle of this X is actually establishing my vanishing point. Now, I am drawing a little bit darker than I normally would because I want you all to see the lines effectively, but I can't say this enough. Draw lightly so you can erase most of your orthogonal lines. Next, I'm going to pick a top left orthogonal line and make a dot. By making my ruler perpendicular to the sides of my drawing area, as you can see, I line up the bottom to that dot, I'm going to draw and make a dot, a line, and a dot. After it intersects with a bottom left orthogonal line, I'm going to make my ruler perpendicular to the side this time. If I do my job, all of my corners should match up pretty well to make an X, which will, in the end, indicate the shape of my back wall. I did pretty well there. Next. If you want to go ahead and clean up some of your space, I think it's a fine time to do it. I erased some of the X there, but I kept it in those four locations. I'm going to move on to create the door in the space. If you're not sure where to put it, I put it towards the left wall on the left side by making a little dot, making certain my ruler again is perpendicular to the bottom of the drawing area, and I'm going to draw downward until it intersects with the next orthogonal line. This gives me a dot, a line, and another dot. I'm going to lightly, using my ruler, connect that dot that I made at the top back to my vanishing point. I'm going to darken it just a little bit so you can see what I've done. Now, I don't need the door line to go all the way back, so if you want to erase some of that content, it's not an unwise move. Now, I want to make another dot right here. I'm going to draw downward with a perpendicular line until it intersects again. Now I have a generic door shape. At this point, to check the learner's understanding, I would have them draw a door frame. And the best way to do that is just to make a dot in the top left corner and have them finish drawing out the door frame using the same methods they used to create the original door shape. Next, we're going to move on to the picture or window on the right wall. We're going to start by picking a place not too far from the edge of the drawing area and making a dot. I'm going to line my ruler up to the drawing area, draw down and make a dot, a line, and another dot. You'll notice I didn't go all the way to the bottom like I did with the door. It's not necessary. We have a dot, line, and a dot. I'm going to connect those dots back to the vanishing point using my ruler. If you need to connect it all the way back to make sure you're doing it correctly, that's fine. Just do it lightly. Next, I'm going to pick another point on that top orthogonal line, make another dot, line my ruler up to the bottom of the drawing area, and draw down until it intersects. Very good. At this point, you can clean it up again. If you want to check for a learner's understanding, do just like the door and create a frame around that window shape by making a dot, a line, and a dot. If you're able to effectively make a frame on both these objects, 
it's fair to say that the artist is probably ready to move on to more complex geometric shapes. Next, we're going to move on to making the floor of our room using one point linear perspective. The way I do it is basically using your best guesswork. When you're making your guesswork, what I suggest is this. Line your ruler up to your vanishing point, making a perpendicular line. But don't draw all the way down. It's not necessary. Just make a dash. That dash is designed to cut this line right here in half. We're going to take this half and we're going to cut it into halves. I usually just eyeball it. If the learner is feeling, you know, as though they want to be more certain, they can measure it out. That's fine. I'm just going to use best guesswork. Half here and half here. Now I have divided this line into fourths. I'm going to take those fourths and I'm going to divide each one of them in half to create eighths. The point of these hashes is to indicate how many vertical rows are going to be on the floor. I can now line up my orthogonal lines connected back to my vanishing point and I will draw downward from the hashes. This will give me the vertical lines that I need to create my floor tiles. When if you continue proceeding doing this downward, maintaining back to the vanishing point each time, you'll end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. The next row I think is a really clever trick. You're going to connect this corner right here to this corner right here using your ruler. When you connect those two lines, two dots rather, you're going to create a series of intersecting points. Each one of those intersecting points is where you're going to place a perpendicular horizontal line. When you make these perpendicular horizontal lines, you will find out how many rows you need of your floor tile. This trick is great at creating that sense of depth with floor tiles in your drawings. This will also help you figure out how to do other three-dimensional forms using linear perspective. When you're done, you've completed the floor tiles of your one-point linear perspective room. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you need to pause and, and rework some of these areas, I know a lot of learners struggle with this diagonal line trick. Feel free to do so.